hello welcome to another chatty video of mine i hope you enjoy this one right now i'm going through my hobonichi weeks and i'll be putting in a few entries into the back where the notes are and filling out some pages for my movies that i've been watching recently uh, i wouldn't recommend reading what i'm writing unless you want to be spoiled or if you're just that curious but just know there might be or there very much is a high chance there are spoilers in my writing because I'm writing about my review and then summary of the movies so just letting you know I'm gonna be talking a bit more about how I'm using my Hope Ninja Weeks right now and then how I've been using it lately so right now, at least in the back pages, I'm just using it as a media journal where I talk about my movies I've been watching recently and any anime or any other K-drama or Chinese drama shows I've been watching. I put it all in the back. I've done a few book spreads in here as well, but mostly movies is what I'm focusing on right now. And this is mainly because I use my other journals and notebooks for daily journaling. And honestly, I have not been using the Hobonichi Weeks that much for planning. So even on the regular weeks pages, I don't have that much stuff to write about. So I really don't need the notes pages in the back for anything in particular for what I'm writing each week. So that's why I'm using it as a media tracker and also just to document how I'm feeling about the movies I've been watching. It's not really a pressure for me to fill it out every week in the back. It's just whenever I watch some movies and I feel like writing them down. So my spreads are usually just me writing the title with some of the markers I have and then writing a little fact summary about it in terms of when the movie was released, the director, and maybe the producers for it. And then I'll write a bit of a summary based off what I find on Google. And then I'll also write how I felt about it, give a little rating, any quotes I liked, and just whatever I want to write about it. And usually I'll limit myself to one page for the movies I've been watching lately. But in the past I have gone over two pages, but right now I'm going to keep it to one for all the spreads I'm doing today. The Hobonichi Weeks I'm using here is the 2024 Bowen Tie cover for the Tiny Dragons. And I have a clear plastic cover on top of that. And I'm writing with my Twisby Eco fountain pen in extra fine nib. And I really have been liking the Hobonichi Weeks but i'm not using it as much like honestly i am not filling it out i've been skipping so many weeks and i have so many empty pages the only thing consistently that i've been using is the back notes pages whenever i have a movie that i want to write about i used to use this type of format which is the weeks horizontal format in college which i liked a lot because i used a moleskin and i used a muji undated planner that has the same format and basically on the left side I would break it into two columns. One column is mainly for events so I would use the triangle symbol which I think I got from bullet journaling um, to write down my events and then once the event is completed I would check it off or cross it out if it didn't happen and then on the right side or the right column of the left page I would use it to track my task I need to do. So I would put a square if it's a must-do task for the day, and then I'll put a circle if it's a task that I want to do, but it's okay if I don't get that done. I would use the right page to group out and separate my different classes I had. So for example, if I had five to six classes, I would put my class down, underline it, highlight it, and then based off my syllabus and based off my calendar I knew I had for school, I would write down the must-do task and events and any assignments that I would do this week that I had to tackle for the week. So then when I get to my left page and my right column, I would put in based off which day it was, what tasks I wanted to get done that day or had to get done that day in terms of studying or doing a homework set and that really helped a lot in terms of managing my schedule and I would update that every week and that was really helpful. But now, out of college and when I have work all day long, I don't have that much stuff to do at home in terms of filling out this entire spread and page for all my tasks, mainly because I don't have a set deadline. I think that's the biggest issue I have. I don't have a set deadline to do all the stuff I want to do or need to do because it's very flexible. 
which is good and bad because sometimes I procrastinate a lot and I'm not getting what I need to do done but at the same time I can move it all around and that's why this paper planning method that I used in college is not working for me now that I'm out of college and that's why I'm looking for a new book for 2025 because I don't see myself getting the hope in two weeks again when I'm not going to use it every week because I really just don't have that many tasks to do in one week to fill it up which is why I'm going towards more of a digital route and continuing to use Google Calendar and navigating and allocating more of my tasks on the Google Calendar in terms of a digital format from my paper formats that I've been using in terms of making it more efficient and productive for me in terms of getting the most important things done but also future planning as well for upcoming events and other special tasks that I do have to get done. But otherwise, I've just been enjoying the Hopanichi Weeks notes sections as my media journal. This happens a lot for a lot of the notebooks I've tried and I don't really use it for what I bought it for. I end up just using it as a media journal, which I don't mind because I do find enjoyment in writing in it. I do really like writing with my fountain pen in the Hopanichi Weeks in terms of the nice Tomo River paper. So I've been liking that a lot, but I still am trying to figure out what to do with the week section because sometimes I'll be very hyped up about it and I'll use it and I'll fill it out and then the following days later I haven't checked it at all, I'm not using it, I'm not checking anything off, I don't really look at it. It stays on my desk all the time, but it's just closed on my desk. So it looks really pretty, but I'm not really getting a use out of it right now in terms of planning. If you like this horizontal weeks layout, I would recommend looking at Moleskin Notebooks, Muji. They have A5, A6, Undated, and Traveler's Notebook inserts. They have this horizontal layout as well, dated and undated. So if you want this layout in a different style or in a book size that fits your needs there's plenty of options out there that could be good for you it's just that right now I'm no longer really needing this style of notebook planning because it's no longer fitting the lifestyle I have now and how I want to journal and plan right now and I think that's a big thing I want to focus on for 2025 is really downsizing to one book that is dated I do not want two books again that are dated so that's a big thing for me and then also realizing that I still think I'm a planner and I want to have my plan scheduled but I'm going to use Google Calendar more and more because it's just more efficient and effective for me. I don't need the paper planner as much anymore because all my tasks are very flexible and I just don't have that many tasks in general that I need to do on a weekly basis because a lot of them can just be moved around and I want a book that can reflect that and help me with my current lifestyle. I feel like in 2023 and 2024, I've done a lot of exploring in terms of new notebooks and different brands. And in 2025, I plan on doing even more of that. I'm slowly trying more and more things and figuring out what I like specifically. So I'm very happy about that, but it's definitely a journey and a process. But I really enjoy journaling as a hobby. So I'm very happy to explore more and try new things. Right now I am on page 29 out of 73 blank pages in the back of the Hobonichi Weeks and I'm excited to watch more movies and hopefully some anime as well so I can finish this back of the Hobonichi Weeks and then I think after that I think I will try to do some repurposing of my Hobonichi Weeks and play around with some spreads in the weekly pages that I have not used. I'm not too sure how I want to go about using those pages and repurposing them, but hopefully I'll find some ideas and I'll show you guys if anything looks good to me or if anything works out. But otherwise, I do intend to finish up this notebook or this planner in 2024 at least. I'm still using it and I am enjoying the back pages at least. I really like the paper and I love the brand. I've been watching the previews all of August so far. So I'm very excited to see more from the brand and see what's coming in 2025 but I just need to figure out what I'm gonna be doing next year and I will say I'm very happy I did get the Hobonichi Weeks in 2024 because it's my first Hobonichi Planner 
And I don't really regret getting it because if anything, it told me and showed me that I really do not need this much space for planning now that I'm done with college because I need to find a new system that will work with me and my new life right now. And that's my main focus and I'm very excited because I want to do more and invest more into my daily journaling which I've been loving a lot. So hopefully that will bring me to some new brands and books and notebooks and I'm very excited for that and we'll see what happens next. And thank you for watching and listening to me talk about journals and the Hobonichi Weeks. Take care!